we're also into essential oils, yun din na ginaisip namin na mag-business kami ng essential oils. Ayun. Wow, that's very nice. Parang napaka-organic kung paano siya pinanganak. No? That's really yeah. wonderful. Okay, so we have a few people in our room. And then now we are live on YouTube. I just checked. Okay, naka-live na siya. Tapos, um, they're also live on TikTok. So if you have friends who would like to join, you can just invite. Kung wala silang registration, that's fine. You can just invite them in through um, either TikTok or YouTube. Um, thank you so much again, Chris. Maybe I'll take the stage. Sure. Yes, mm-hmm. go ahead. And I'll just share my screen. So I actually prepared a very, very short EO 101 um, presentation for everybody here who is very, very new about essential oil. So basically, this session is targeted to essential oil newbies. So if you have any known essential oils, please invite them in, share them the link, invite them to check out YouTube or my TikTok. Just search for Couch Wasabi. Okay? So hello, everyone. I hope you can see my slides. Yes? Great. Okay, so good afternoon. I am Jerby Ko. I am a certified aromatherapist since 2019. I'm one of the pioneers here in the Philippines. I am a certified aroma, I'm an aromatherapy teacher, the first and I think so far the only one. Um, I have been published in multiple international aromatherapy journals. And I'm also a professional member of ICANN. I am a board member for the Alliance of International Aromatherapists. It's a US-based professional aromatherapy organization that's very focused on education and up-leveling the education system of aromatherapy. I am also the chair of media committee for this organization and the Philippine representative for AIA. I am the Philippine ambassador for AIRMED Institute. This is also a nonprofit um, professional organization for aromatherapists that's very, very focused on sustainability and rehabilitation of plants. And I'm the founder of APA, Alliance of the Philippine Aromatherapists, the first professional aromatherapy organization here in the Philippines, and the first aromatherapy certification school, AIP. So let's start with our uh, mini lecture. What are essential oils? Basically, essential oils are concentrated, hydrophobic, aromatic, and volatile chemical compounds that are distilled or expressed from a plant's fruit, resin, leaf, whether it's uh, flowers, uh, seeds, sa fruit, sa twigs, or serine from citrus. So this little illustration here, as you can see, this is the typical um, process of producing your essential oil. Maraming variations yan, but this is a typical you know, where in the, your plant material or biomass, you will put it in a container. Um, sometimes it's submerged in water, sometimes it's separated from water, pero there's always a plant material involved, and then there's always water involved, kasi papakuluan mo yung tubig, then there's evaporation, there's a condenser, so next step, and then after that, doon lalabas yung essential oil nyo. On this third container, you will normally see two parts. So my water part, that's your hydrosol, or floral water, and all the things that will be floating on top, yan yung essential oil mo. Okay? Ito yung process na normally dapat pagdaanan ng plants para ma-extract mo yung essential oil. So going back, ito yung mga key um, information when you describe essential oils. Essential oils are concentrated forms of plant-derived substances. Therefore, it needs to be, ideally, it needs to be diluted kasi masyado siyang concentrated. It's too strong. It's too potent. Next, sinabi natin kanina na it's hydrophobic which means they do not really blend well with water. They do not blend easily with water because it's hydrophobic. And it's highly volatile, aromatic compounds. Mabilis siyang mag-evaporate, ang ibig sabihin nun. And finally, it's usually uh, obtained through distillation or mechanical methods like expression or cold pressing. Okay? Now, sometimes, is some plant, one plant can produce different oils. Sometimes one plant can produce different oils. You lost your audio. Yeah, sorry. So um, sometimes there's one plant that can produce different oils. 
Okay, so like this plant, this is a bitter orange plant. As you can see, in leaves, you can produce petty grain oil. Sa blossoms or yung flowers ng orange tree, or orange tree, you can produce neroli. And the fruit itself, kinuha mo yung rind, you can produce bitter orange essential oil. Kasi nabanggit natin kanina na um, our essential oil can be sourced from different parts of the plant. Yeah. So how can we differentiate whether it's an essential oil or it's a fragrance oil? You have to remember, yung mga naririnig nyo when you go out sa malls, when you go out sa mga bazaars, uso yan ngayon, right? It's Christmas. Pag na-attend kayo ng bazaars, marami mong sabi, ma'am, bili na kayo water-based essential oils. Those are a total giveaway na hindi siya essential oil because there's no such thing as water-based essential oils. Pag sinabi nila yun, it's an automatic fragrance oil na yan. Bakit? Kasi essential oils are pure plant extracts na, na dapat nang galing siya dun sa process na binanggit natin kanina. While fragrance oils are produced in the lab, these are synthetic-made chemical compounds. Sometimes they are um, sourced from plants, tapos hinahaluan na lang ng synthetic, or dinadagdagan ng synthetic sa lab. Or sometimes, the entirety of it is wholly produced sa lab. Okay? Meron namang fragrance oils na meron ding essential oil components, tapos dinadagdagan na lang nila ng additional isolates or chemicals para mas maging stable. Pero yun lang ang best nun. Um, essential oils are from organic sources, while fragrance oils are synthetic. It's it's you know whipped up from a lab. Um, essential oils are from aromatic plant parts, while fragrance oils can be sourced to aromatic plant parts and can also be synthetic compounds. For example, there's no such thing as strawberry essential oil, diba? Pero meron tayong strawberry fragrance, kasi um, ginawa na yun sa lab. You, um, the scientists now, you know, our lab are so advanced now, they can actually um, mimic um, nature-produced scents and aromas. Kaya na nilang kopihin. Lavender is actually one of the most um, adulterated oils. Kasi maraming may gusto ng lavender. So marami din gumagawa ng fragrance oils ng lavender. Yan, and dito makikita niyo yung very summarized um, differences between essential oils and fragrance oils. Okay. Methods of extraction. So there are actually five ways to extract aromatic components. Typical um, ways you can extract um, aromatic components. But there are actually two processes that, processes that you can do to extract essential oils. So there's Distillation or steam distillation. Number two is cold expression. Yung sinabi natin kanina, pag citrus yan or from a rind, we can use cold expression. And there's also what you call solvent extraction when you want to produce absolute. Pag solvent extraction, gagamit ka ng solvent like uh, methane or other gas components na pinipressurize mo para ma-extract mo yung aromatic plant compounds. There's also CO2 hypercritical extraction to produce your CO2 extracts, okay? Um, soon, um, if you are more into aromatherapy, mapag-aaralan mo yung CO2 and ginagamit din natin yan sa aromatherapy, especially in clinical aromatherapy. And there's also what you call enfleurage. Enfleurage is the most expensive, most labor, tedious, um, labor extensive and tedious process na ginagawa nila before. So normally ang enfleurage, ginagamit lang yan sa mga petals. Yung mga plants may soft, delicate petals like jasmine, rose, um, neroli. Kasi the way you do this is you put a layer of your petals and then you put a layer of animal fat. So that's either lard or tallow. Tapos lalagyan mo ulit ng layer ng petals, tapos layer ulit ng animal fat. Why do you do this? Kasi you want all those, nabanggit natin kanina na yung essential oil ay hydrophobic, meaning it, it's allergic sa tubig, but it's high, um, lipophilic. It loves oil. Kaya kapag nilagyan mo siya ng layer ng animal fat, in essence, yung animal fat, inaabsorb niya yung fragrances or yung aroma, yung aromatic compounds from the plant, at doon nila ina-extract. So, from the animal fat, kukunin niya yung aromatic compounds sa petal, and then ikaw, kukunin mo yung aromatic components from the animal fat. Maproseso siya at hindi na siya masyadong ginagawa ngayon. And since it's labor-intensive, mas mahal siya kapag yung essential oil ay galing sa enfleurage. But there are still a few 
artisan producers who who like doing this because of the craft. Um, usually in Europe, but hindi na siya ka famous in all the other parts of the world. Okay, so let's go back to the first two processes that we talked about. Kasi ito yung pinaka-common. So first is distillation. Distillation, yun yung pinakita ko sa inyo kanina na mahabang process na merong plant material, pinapakuluan, tapos magkocondense, tapos may extract mo. That's basically distillation. And there are also different kinds of distillation. We will not go into that because this is just a basic class. Pero sa certification course natin, pinag-uusapan natin yan. Um, and when, you go, when the plant goes through distillation, you can actually produce two kinds of aromatic plant products. You can have essential oils or hydrosols, di ba na pag-usapan natin kanina. Pag dumaan siya sa process na yun, ang ending mo sa third container may dalawang parts. Yung lumulutang, yun yung essential oils, sinasa ilalim, yun yung floral water, and that's your hydrosol. And then the other process is expression or cold expression, cold processing. Pag yan yung, um, pag pinipiga mo yung rind para lumabas yung aroma, and yun yung ipaprocess mo, that is what you call expression. We will go into that a little in a little bit. Ayan. So ito na yung illustration niya. To differentiate distillation and expression. As you can see here, pag distillation, there's always a heat source. Okay? Hindi mo mawawala yan. Kasi hindi mo may extract yung essential oil without it. And then, ibababad mo yung plant. Ito nakababad yung plant sa water. Kanina para nakiwalay, right? So there are different kinds of distillation. There's um, steam distillation, there's hydro distillation, there are different kinds of distillation. But in essence, there's evaporation involved, condensation involved, and on this, on this um, final container, it will be separated in two parts. And that's your hydrosol and your um, essential oils. Now, on the next process, it's expression or cold pressing. Usually, the citrus fruit is put here in the container. Tapos, meron siyang mga mechanical needles Kasi the way you um, extract these oils is dapat bubutas-butas. Parang alam mo yung micro-needling sa face, sa facial. So parang ganun siya. May micro-needle mo yung rind ng fruit and you press them together para lumabas yung oil, ma-extract mo yung oil. And eventually, mag it has to go through a pressurized container. So yan, meron pa rin siyang pressure na involved kasi para ma-extract mo, malabas mo talaga lahat ng essential oils niya. And then, bago mo siya i-filter, tapos bago lalabas dito. Okay? Normally, with this process, wala yung hydrosol kasi yung juice at saka yung essential oil na extract mo. Normally, nasa distillation lang yung merong hydrosol. Okay? Alright, so why is it important for you to know kung ano yung method of extraction? Before, hindi natin inisip yan. Basta pag orange, oh, we just love orange. We don't care if it's clean distilled or whether it's cold pressed. But as you go in through aromatherapy, you may realize mo, ah, kaya pala important na malaman kung bakit, kung ano ba siyang, ano yung process niya. Kasi, here's a list of the common citrus oils that we use in aromatherapy. I'm sure you're familiar with this. You've chanced upon lemon. You've seen lime and grapefruit. For sure, you've seen bergamot, right? So, Ang difference lang niya is, kapag distilled kasi siya, most distilled citrus oils are non-phototoxic. Ano ba yung phototoxic? We will go through that later. Pero, tandaan niyo lang, most um, citrus oils, basta pag distilled siya, mas safe siya sa skin. Okay? Hindi siya magre-react sa sun. Hindi kayo masa sunburn pag ginamit niyo siya under the sun. Except bergamot oil. Okay? Bergamot, whether it's distilled or cold-pressed, it's phototoxic. Okay? Ang bergamot, bago siya maging hindi phototoxic, dapat dadaan siya sa lab process, tatanggalin mo mismo yung isolate ng FCF. So there are brands who sell bergamot FCF free, yun lang yung hindi phototoxic. But whatever process you do with bergamot, it's phototoxic. And then pag expressed siya, meaning cold pressed, um, it's most likely phototoxic. Kasi hindi nahihiwalay sa pagpipiga yung chemical comp compound na what makes it uh, sensitive against the sun. Okay? So that's the main gist of it. Methods of application. There are three common um, ways to enjoy your essential oils. First is aromatically. So ano ba yung aromatically? Yan, yung favorite natin pag diffuse, pwedeng inhaler, 
Pag-usapan natin yan mamaya. And then second, there's ingestion. I'm sure some of you have heard about ingestion, yung iniinom yung oil sa, not iniinom, but pinapatakan ng essential oil, yung cup of water or coffee or whatever, and then they drink it, which we don't really recommend, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then third is topically. This is another common way to enjoy your oils, wherein you put some of your oils sa carrier oil, tapos gagawin mo massage oil, or gagawin mo siyang roller blend, tapos ipapahid mo. Very, very common. Very, very welcoming, diba? Beginner-friendly ways to enjoy your oils. As I've mentioned earlier, today we will only be talking about aromatic application and topical application. Okay? If you've heard about ingesting oils, we acknowledge that meron talagang ganung practice, but we don't um, recommend that to beginners. Okay? Like ako, I'm already in my level 3 of certification, pero I very rare, like, Perhaps in my entire time of studying about oils and working using oils, I've only did that once. It's it's that hindi siya dapat ginagawa every day. That's my point. Ingesting oils is not to be done casually. And so kayo as beginners must hindi niyo siya kailangan gawin. Okay? Okay, so let's talk about aromatic application. Basically, when you say aromatic application, it's the use of essential oils as part of your diffuser blend, as part of your inhaler or steam inhalation, okay? So, kung gaya dito sa picture, dinidiffuse natin siya, or I mean, inhalers, kasi sometimes, mas um, practical kapag nilalagay mo siya sa inhalers and diffuser, especially when you're out in public spaces, mas efficient ang inhalers kaysa sa mag-diffuse ka, na hindi naman gusto ng lahat ng tao yung dinidiffuse. <laughs> Next is topical application. When you're using essential oils topically, um, it is when you add it into your roller blends, massage oils, and other botanical body care formulations. Like when you're preparing um, essential oil facial serum, essential oil na massage oils, or shampoo, we can make shampoo using essential oils, lotions, creams, I've done that. And nasa picture, gumagawa ako ng oleo gel. It's like a um, gel serum using essential oils. Okay, proper dilution. Since we talked about safety and application, we should talk about dilution and dosage. So why do we need to properly dilute oil? It's very, very simple. Kasi, napag-usapan natin kanina, diba? Essential oils are highly volatile. So meaning, when you put essential oils on your skin, for example, um, Siberian fur, this is amazing as chest support oil. Pag meron kayong mga um, difficulty in breathing or allergic rhinitis, um, and you wanted to um, have like a chest rub or chest massage, you can put like one drop of this and then a five peso size of carrier oil, rub it a bit, and then bago mo spread sa chest mo. That's gonna be so relieving. And kaya mo ginagawa yan kasi instead of using this straight to your chest and rub, na alam natin volatile ang essential oil. As you can see here sa reminder, 90% of it mag-evaporate lang kasi you know, your essential oils are so volatile that most of it may evaporate instead of absorb ng katawan mo. And that's the reason why you need to use carrier oils kasi your carrier oils will be there to carry your essential oil components inside your body. And also, since carrier oils are not volatile, hindi siya kasing volatile ito, it helps parang retain your essential oil on, on top of your skin para instead na mag-evaporate siya sa atmosphere at masayang, nandiyan siya at mas ma-absorb siya ng body mo. Okay? So what are carrier oils? Carrier oils are used to dilute essential oils and carry them to your skin. They do not evaporate as quickly. They're, therefore, you know, they're very optimal to use when using your essential oils and they help preserve the essential oil until it fully penetrates in, within your skin. And also, kaya maganda rin pag-usapan yung carrier oil kasi different carrier oils available can help support whatever um, desired benefit that you want. For example, if you have sensitive skin, right? You have eczema, for example, and you wanted to calm down your skin. Perhaps you can get something like uh, rose hip or taman oil that helps with collagen production para masood yung skin mo. 
meron din mga carry oils na may anti-inflammatory, may mga oils din na um, help prevent scarring, like rosehip again, and um, what's the other oil? So many carrier oils available. Na argan oil is also good for scarring. Yung mga pang stretch marks, yan. Argan oil is amazing for that as well. So, so many carrier oils, marabin silang iba ibang benefit. And by choosing this specific carrier oil, pwede mong isupport yung gusto mong mangyari sa blend mo. You can not only um, think about yung benefit ng essential oil, but also supplement it with the benefit of the carrier oil that you intend to use. So other names na maririnig mo that speaks about carrier oil is also, um, can also be fixed oils, ang tawag sa carrier oil, or vegetable oil, or base oil. Sometimes they call it as base oil. Also, iba-ibang carrier oil, may iba-iba silang comedogenic factor, um, iba-iba din sila ng properties, kung mas thick ba siya, for people na may dry skin, maybe you can choose something na mas rich, for people with oily combination skin, you can choose oils that are lighter in texture. Meron sila iba-ibang shelf life. So marami kayong pagpipilian and marami kayong options. That's what I'm trying to drive right now. Na. Maraming carry oils, marami kayong options. Um, meron din oils na mas accessible to us Filipinos. Meron din mas hindi masyado. So marami tayong pwedeng tamitin. We don't have to be boxed in one carrier oil in any way kasi marami tayong options. Ang importante, maisip nyo na parati siyang i-dilute. Okay, so here's a quick dilution guide that I would like to share with everyone. And this guide is primarily about topical application. Okay, so kunyari, normally naman ang ginagamit natin is 10 ml, right? 10 ml bottle or 5 ml bottle. Um, for daily use, please stick to 0.5%, especially if it's a face product for daily use. So kung gagawa kayo ng facial cream, ng eye serum, um, Make sure na it's 0.5 lang kasi manipis ang skin natin sa face and you don't really need as much to get to experience the desired benefit. Okay, if you're using or making a massage oil for infants, maximum is 0.5 as well. Tandaan nyo, itong dilution guide ay para lang sa topical application. Um, we're not talking about um, diffusion here, okay? Dilution for topical application. Paggawa ng massage oils or blend. For elderly, 1.5% to 2.5. Kasi manipis na rin ang balat nila, so you don't really need much. Plus, baka meron tayong mga health concerns na pwedeng silipin bago sila bigyan ng todo-todo ng essential oil. So, um, this group of people, you have to be very, very careful and mindful when you're making essential oil blends for them, for infants and elderly. For standard, normal, healthy, functioning human being, you can go... Um, to 1.5 to 2% as the standard dilution na pwede nyo gamitin. For treatment, for example, wound healing or um, sabihin natin nga na meron siyang mga skin concerns like eczema, psoriasis, pwede siyang 5%. For chronic pain or acute pain, pwede 10% up to 20%. That's the maximum. And make sure it's not um, gonna go beyond five days kasi medyo matapang siya pag 20%. But for pain, no, sometimes kasi pag masyadong mababa, nasasayang lang kasi walang nangyayari. So, if you experience people na na natapilok, na sprain, you know, sometimes talaga you need that heavy, um, heavily diluted and really uh, um, para mas mag-heal nila yung relief kasi mas mataas yung dilution. But again, don't go beyond 5 days. And for those who have irritated and sensitive skin, please stick to 0.25%. Kasi irritated na ngayon skin to begin with. And essential oils are, you know, each essential oil would contain a bunch of chemical components na pwede rin ma-irritate yung tao. Isa dun sa bunch of chemical components na yan. So you want to minimize uh, as much as possible um, it attends to that. In fact, with some clinical aromatherapists, they forego using essential oils when they're dealing with um, like older people na my sensitive skin. Kasi sometimes yung, carrier, yung benefit ng carrier oil is enough to help heal or fast track yung recovery ng skin. May mga ganun. So, um, as an aromatherapist, you would have the knowledge and the conscientious, I guess, um, understanding kung kailan mo talaga dapat maglagay ng oil or pwedeng hydrosol na lang or pwedeng CO2 extraction lang 
there are different options for us. Okay, let's focus on providing um, essential oil um, blends for children. Okay, so for kids, and this is according to Tessaran's guidelines, for zero to three months, please stick to 0.1 to 0.2%. Ba yun? Bakit? <laughs> Biglang nagkalain. Okay, so please stick to 0.1 to 0.2%. For three to 24 months, that's two years old, please take to 0.25 to 0.5%. Very, very little long. So if you want to make a chest rub for your baby, if you want to make um, a massage oil for your baby, you can um, put very, very little amount of essential oil and make sure to use only oils that are safe for children. Okay, there are a lot of oils that hindi pwede sa bata, and we will go through that in a little bit. But remember to stick to this very, very low dilution. If you, wanted to, if you don't want to think about dilution, um, opt for using hydrosols. Okay, there's always that option, diba? So, depende kasi sa case and depende sa use. Sometimes, baka pag cough, no, kailangan mong, I don't know, you want to provide relief, kaya gusto mong gumawa ng um, chest rub for your kid. Pero pwede rin namang hydrosol. You can also diffuse hydrosol and you don't really have to think about the age. So, gano. meron naman option. Um, and you just have to know and understand why you're doing it and why you're choosing that specific uh, modality or specific oil for your child. And then for two to six years, one to two percent, there are oils sa bawal, six years and below, so you would have to know about that. For six years old to 15 years old, medyo okay na to, stable na siya, so you can go up to 3%, it's fine. And then for 15 and above, typical normal person at 2.5 to 5% 2 .5 is fine. Remember, for kids in the first three age group, so from infant up to um, six years, dapat topical application lang, okay? Never ever diffuse essential oils around infants. Okay, please remember that. Kaya inuulit ko kanina, itong dilution na to is for topical application. Even yung chart natin kanina, for topical application lang. Diffusion is highly high. It's the fastest way to introduce your body to essential oils and therefore you're not supposed to do that to young children. Okay, do not diffuse essential oils to young children. Please remember that. Um, if meron kayong kailangan matake away in this two-hour um, two session, at pass your information to your neighbor, to your friend, to your sister-in-law, or whoever, tell them, please do not diffuse essential oils around young children, especially at two years old and below. Okay? Tandaan nyo lang yan. And I will be grateful if you pass on that information. Okay? Next slide. You can also dilute according to your purpose. Okay? So, if you're making cosmetic, and this is from this end as well, if you're making cosmetic um, cosmetics for your face or deodorants, kasi manipis yung skin natin sa underarms, please stick to 0.2 to 1.5%. But usually, people do 1%. If you're creating body lotions or massage oils, you can go up to 3%. 3 to 5 is normal, but this around recommends 2%. For bath products, especially yung mga wash-off, um, pwede kang 2 to 4%. Usually it's three, um, but in the three standard, it's usually three to five. Um, yan yung mga hand wash, body wash, and shampoo. Yan. Pag acne spot treatment or wound, wounds, that's two to 10%. Um, standard that was 4%, but the normally, normally I see it's 5% for industry um, brands or commercial brands. And for pain, it's normally 5%. But you can play around from 3 to 10%. Okay. Um, unfortunately, for commercial brands, I see people making it up to 20%. Okay. So those are just industry knowledge and um, commercial knowledge from working with different brands so far. Okay. So here, it's just a quick tip. Parang, oh my God, undaming numbers, undaming, undaming math. Do I really have to go through this? If, if you are diluting or preparing your own essential oil roller, all you have to remember is um, one drop is 1% in 5 ml. So two drops is 2% in 5 ml. So ito siya. Ah, no, wala siya dito. Kasi ang start nito is 10%. So ito dinoblen niya. So ganun lang. 
one drop is 1% of a 5 ml. So, kung gagawa ka ng 3% uh, na naka 10 ml, ibig sabihin, you need, you need 6 drops. Kasi, you would need 3 drops para mag-3% sa 5 ml times 2 mo. So, 3 uh, times 2 is 6 drops para making 3% sa 10 ml. So, ganun lang siya. Parang multiply mo lang siya. Kaya mo nakuha tong chart na ito, itong table na ito. It's from this very, very little information. One drop is 1% in 5 ml. Tapos may multiply lang nila to get the dilution that they want. And this is the fastest um, information that I can share with you para sa bilis niyo maalala. Okay. But then again, there are a lot of other um, dilution charts that you can see on Google. Um, I would most likely refer to Tisaran on this. And... I know this is also based from this land, but this is based from other brands. Yung ibang brand, they will give you like a recommended dilution chart to help you out. Okay, so let's move on to essential oil safety. Okay, so what is phototoxicity or photosensitivity? We talked about this earlier a bit, na mention natin. Basically, phototoxicity can occur when your essential oil is exposed to the UV rays of the sun. Because some of these constituents or chemical components would react negatively when exposed to UV rays. Okay, so it just so happens that when you skin mo yung oil niyan at nung react siya sa UV rays ng sun, ano ang ending mo? Okay, it's very simple. Mas sunburn ka. So inflammation, blistering, reddening, and burning of the skin are common reactions. Adverse reactions that you can experience when you experience that, when you are exposed to that um, reaction, which is not really good for your skin kasi pwede kang mag-burn, masunog na mag-blister. And always remember, not all cold-pressed citrus oils are phototoxic. Okay? Meron namang cold-pressed essential oils na hindi phototoxic. Like yung mga orange, yung mga um, sweet orange, Yung mga red mandarin, hindi yan phototoxic. Also, calamansi essential oil is not phototoxic. I've had it checked with this around. And dalandan. So those are pretty safe. Um, most steam distilled citrus oils are not phototoxic. So if you love the smell of bergamot, no, not bergamot. If you love the smell of grapefruit, let's say, and you love the smell of lime, for example, pero you want to put it sa, sabihin natin sa, um, solid perfume mo, right? Gagawa ka ng solid perfume, so lalagay mo siya sa pulse point mo para no What you can do is, instead of choosing cold-pressed grapefruit or cold-pressed lemon or lime oil, then just choose um, steam-distilled versions of it para sigurado ka na hindi siya phototoxic or hindi siya magre-react under the sun. Okay? So yun lang naman ang quick tip to on. Here is a list of the commonly available essential oils that are phototoxic. Okay? So, itong list na ito, hindi naman siya madalas ginagamit except for the citrus oils. Like, normally, people don't really know about angelica root, cumin, fig leaf, um, coconut root, or tagiks, right? So, normally naman yung citrus oil lang ang concern natin. Just basta tandaan nyo, pag cold pressed, wag din na lang siyang gamitin sa skin. Like, body scrub. May nagka-client ako na this guy loves the smell of orange and he wanted me to create a sugar scrub na orange yung amoy. So I just have to be very mindful na yung gagamitin kong orange, although it's a wash-off product, has to be safe for the skin. Kasi hindi pa rin natin alam. What if yung, yung banyo niya is ano, maraming natural light, you know, na-expose pala siya sa sun. So habang ginagamit niya sa banyo pa lang, yung pala natutos to ng skin niya. So we have to be very mindful of all of those things when we're making aromatic products for other people. Citrus oils, there are also citrus oils that are not considered as phototoxic. So, na mentioned ko kanina, bergamot, it has to be FCF free. What is FCF? It's a cumarin. It's furanocumarin. Ibig sabihin, ito yung chemical constituent niya mismo that's causing its phototoxicity or photosensitivity. Other brands invest in removing this isolate to make sure na hindi na siya mag-react sa skin. Okay? So, meron mga brands na nagbabenta ng Bergamot FCF free or bergamot cumarin free or bergactin free. Ayan. Um, sabi dito bergamot steam distilled pero kanina kasi sabi ang bergamot whether steam distilled or express meron siyang potential. So perhaps pag steam distilled mas mababa na pero nandun pa rin. 
Um, and all the citrus oils, the steam distilled, yeah, and safe na siya for the skin. Okay? So let's talk about hot oils. And this is another um, common talk point about essential oils. The okay, hot oils, meron mga nagsasabi, there's no such thing as hot oil, may mga nagsasabi na there is. Ako, in my personal opinion, I believe in hot oils because I experienced this myself. I was able to, um, I would say, burn my own skin with the hot oil. Kaya I like teaching about this kasi na-experience na um, it's just a concept. We don't really have to like formally categorize these oils as hot, as hot oils, but it's a concept that the beginners would understand. Basically, when we say it's a hot oil, um, these are oils that can easily, um, pag dumapo siya sa skin mo, it can easily burn your skin. As if natamaan ka ng mainit na mantika. Okay? Hot oils can cause a hot warming sensation when they're accidentally applied on your skin. Examples are clove, black pepper, thyme, cinnamon, lemongrass, basil, cinnamon leaf, or bark, mas matapal yung bark, oregano, wintergreen, and cashew. Okay. Medyo magulo na. Parang wintergreen, malamig naman siya sa skin. Pero, um, tandaan nyo, yung hot oil concept is just a concept. It's not really a formal category of these oils. Para lang mas maintindihan nyo, these oils are too strong na pag tumama siya sa skin mo, may cause um, dermal burning. And this happened to me a few years back. So, this is just a short story. I was preparing an essential oil blend for a friend who has diabetes. And cinnamon is a good oil to help level out blood sugar. Kaya gumagawa ako sa kanya ng um, roller blend. And then sometimes, so for example, when you open an oil bottle, Sometimes my bubble sa tip ng nozzle niya, right? During that time, I was so impatient. I decided to blow the bubble, which is a bad call. Kasi pag blow ko ng bubble, tumalsik yung oil and tumalsik yung cinnamon bark. It was cinnamon bark on my left side of my face. And instantly, in a matter of seconds, I can feel my skin burning. I can feel yung parang hapdi niya and it was really like eating through your skin. So, it was a very, very, um, I would say, hard lesson to learn. <laughs> Kasi talagang nasugat siya agad. And when those accidents happen, always remember, do not, um, do not rub your skin. Kasi mas lalo lang pumapasok yung oil sa skin. So, ang gagawin mo, you get any carrier oil, any vegetable oil na makikita mo, even sa kusina, like corn oil or whatever oil, put it on your skin. Okay, and then wash it off with soap and water. Do not rub, okay? Because the more you rub, the more you um, encourage your skin to absorb. Pastaga, encourage an absorption and you don't want that. You, don't, you want to, to let the vegetable oil pull out whatever essential oil na na-expose sa skin mo, mo wash it away, okay? So, ang tamang um, course of action during essential oil injury or accidents um, every time you tumaan ka ng oil na hindi dapat, put vegetable oil, put it there, and then hugasan mo ng soap and water. Do that over and over again until it feels better. Sometimes you would need to put um, ice pack over it. It depends kung anong nangyari sa'yo. But yun, para ma-relieve ka. Okay. Essential oils for pregnant women and lactating women. So these illustrations I got from... Leah Jacobson, she's also a clinical aromatherapist, and she maintains this page called Essential Using EOSafely.com. So you can also check her out. Um, ito yung mga oils that are safe for pregnant and breastfeeding women. Um, if you want a copy of these slides, just send me a message. Um, for those who have registered, um, I can email you a copy of the slides. For those who are accessing this through TikTok or through YouTube, just send me a message with your email so that I can forward you the slides within this week, okay? Please do not send me follow-up emails. I will be sending it to you. Just wait for them in your inbox, check your spam or something, but I will be sending it to you in a few days' time, okay? So these are the oils that are safe for pregnant women. Usually naman, pag pregnant, kunyari, nausea or nasusuka. Um, usually, they use something like rosalina or rose or spearmint or ginger. 
is what I normally um, would recommend. And um, lavender, so depending on sa woman, eh, di ba meron tayong iba-ibang sensitivity, meron tayong iba-ibang pitaglilihan, so depending on kung ano yung natitake ng body mo. But these are more or less safe for pregnant women. And these are the oils that are a huge no-no for pregnant and lactating women. So, medyo yan yung mga unique oils na I'm sure you're not really going to be using them. Except, I guess, wintergreen is a pretty common oil, especially in the Philippines because the Philippines is very, very into minty oils. So, yun. Pag meron kayong friend na gumagamit ng oils na may wintergreen, yung mga pang pain, yan, please advise them not to. And then, essential oils that are safe for kids. Like as I've mentioned earlier, um, for kids younger than six years old, there are oils that you can use for them because they are still young. And there are oils that might trigger um, respiratory inflammation. So, they can constrict the um, nasal passageways. Nila. So, yun yung mga oils that may 1-8 sinule. Um, kaya dapat yung tandaan, hindi kayo dapat nagdi-diffuse ng oils like rosemary, peppermint, myrtle sa mga bata younger than 6 kasi baka it can overwhelm them. At instead of relieving them, baka mas mahirapan pa sila. Okay? But these oils in this list are more or less safe for them, whether for diffusion or for topical application. Some of the oils na sobrang common gamitin sa mga bata ay chamomile, lavender, citrus oils are common to be used on them like orange, bergamot, lemon, vetiver for those who are hyperactive, pwedeng gamitin si vetiver. Um, what else? Spruces, conifers like fir needle, um, cypress, juniper berry, these are great. For their respiratory support, kapag meron silang dry cough, kapag meron silang chesty cough, yan, pwede mong ganitin yung mga conifers, add, add some minty oils like spearmint, you can put that, and palmarosa is a good oil for their respiratory function, yan, so ito yung mga pwede nyo gamitin for them. Pag nahirapan matulog, you can use sweet orange, cedar wood, lavender, um, pag hyper, pwede nyo gamitin ng vetiver, ng petty grain, patchouli, neroli. Um, these are the combinations that you can use for your children. Okay, frankincense is also a common oil to be used on young kids. All right, for animals. For those of you who are animal lovers, ito naman yung list of oils na pwedeng gamitin sa dogs nyo. I see a lot of um, TikTok videos claiming oils that are not um, recommended for dogs. Pero I feel na yung mga even veterinarians creating these kinds of content. But when I check the list of oils, these are like oils that are pulled up from Google na parang hindi naman natutuo. So parang um, oils like tea tree and peppermint are okay to be used on dogs. Okay? Kasi nakikita ko yun yung parati nilang pinpost. Bawal daw ang tea tree and peppermint sa dogs. That is not true. You can actually use peppermint and tea tree sa dogs. But Always be mindful of the dosage, okay? Always remember, as, para, as Paracelsus once said, the toxicity is according to the dosage. Kaya namamatay yung tao dahil din sa dosage. So smaller breed dogs would need to have more alalay. You, you should treat smaller breed dogs like your cats kasi maliit yung body mass nila. So for smaller breed dogs, I don't really recommend using peppermint and tea tree. Kasi it might be too much. But for dogs like the golden retrievers na sobrang laki, or like yung mga greyhounds, or um, like yung mga scooby-doo, yung sobrang laking breed ng dog, you can definitely use tea tree and peppermint. In fact, with my dog, um, he's a 25 kilo dog. I've used tea tree with him when he had oral, uh, no, not oral papiloma. When he had, um, what you call that, wart? Hindi na siya oral eh, pero parang body wart. So, ginamitan ko siya ng TT oil gel and that was a very, very good treatment in two weeks na wala yung wart niya. Na usually, pag sa vet, they would advise you to have it surgery or cautery and that's gonna be so expensive. So, I used my own um, knowledge in animal aromatherapy to help support my animals as well. 
So ito yung mga oils na commonly used and are safe for dogs. But remember, to always be mindful of the dosage. Okay, animal aromatherapy is a whole new um, other field of study. Um, kaya we can talk about that again in another time dahil mahabang usapan din siya. Now for cats, mas limited ang cats na pwede sa, ang, mas limited ang oils na pwede sa cats. Kasi cats, inherently, they lack two um, metabolic, I would say, um, components within their body. Enzymes, I would rather say. They lack two metabolic enzymes to properly uh, break down essential oils from their body. So, mas hirap ang pusa to break down essential oils. They can at a much longer rate. Okay, so it's also a myth that you can't diffuse around cats. You can actually diffuse around cats. Um, but you have to be very mindful and you have to make sure that your space would have enough um, airflow. Hindi siya constricted na nakasarado at maliit na aircon the whole time and then nag-diffuse ka, hindi yun pwede sa cats. Dapat you have to make sure that you have at least a window open or your doors open or um, there's an option for your animal to be able to go step out of the room if they feel that it's overwhelming them. Because, you know, your cats and dogs would have their own inherent knowledge of survival. If alam nilang hindi okay sa kanila yung oil, Marunong silang umalis. Marunong silang mag-step out of the room. And so you have to provide that option for your pet. Like I understand uh, some of you who are attending now might be so into essential oils and would love to diffuse kanyan. You can, pero be mindful of the people and the pets that are sharing the space with you. Okay? So dapat lang when you're diffusing, dapat merong yan. Kasi alam niya na hindi sa kanya dapat yung winter game. Kaya alam niya na, hey mom, you're not supposed to diffuse this around me. So your cat is actually calling your attention. So these are the list of oils na, na super no-no um, with your cats. Usually citruses are not okay for cats. Um, mints are not okay for cats. Very limited lang actually yung pwede sa cats. So like lavender is typically okay. Frankincense is typically okay. Um, but these oils that are high in phenols and ketones, normally, hindi sila pwede. So all the hot oils na pinag-usapan natin kanina, bawal yun sa cats. All citrus oils, mostly bawal yun sa cats. I've, I haven't met, like I have a lot of cats here. I haven't seen any one of them who is honestly um, gravitated towards citrus oils. I've seen some of them gusto ng lavender. Some of them... Um, Ano ba yung, sometimes nagre-react sila positively. Sa animal aromatherapy, pinag-uusapan din namin yun. We observe our pet and how they react towards animals. So we see parang actions and related to likeness as well. So we study that in animal aromatherapy. Okay? So re recommended resource. For all of you beginners, I would highly recommend you to be part of these two Facebook groups, that is Aromatherapy Safety. This is an international safety group on Facebook. So just search for it, Aromatherapy Safety. Ito yung logo niya, para hindi kayo malos. And I also help manage this along with my other international colleagues in aromatherapy and our very own Alliance of the Philippine Aromatherapists. Hindi nyo kailangan maging aromatherapist to join these groups. As long as you're interested about OS and you want to learn about safety, everybody is so welcome to join Aromatherapy Safety Facebook Group and Alliance of the Philippine Aromatherapists. Okay, and for everyone who's joining today, before I get on to your questions, well, may nakita akong questions sa Zoom natin and may nakita rin ako mga participants sa TikTok. So for today, um, if you want to learn more about essential oils or if you have an essential oil business and you want to build your credibility, I highly recommend you to please check out our school that's Aromatherapy Institute of the Philippines and get your own certification. Our certification course is very, very affordable. I've worked so hard to work this and make sure na mas Filipino friendly yung presyo na. Just for context, when I had my own certification, and I'm sure Chris can attest to this, that Chris is also taking his certification from another school, we had to pay over 100,000 pesos. That's about $2,000 to get certified. But with our own Philippine school, I've made sure to bring down the cost to about a quarter of its price. So sobrang affordable niya. We also have zero 
percent per month installment for the Filipinos, exclusively for Filipinos or Philippine-based enrollees, and only for you guys who are attending right now. Um, you can use this code NUKSIS50 to get $50 off if you enroll this December. So kung gusto mong makuha tong discount and avail of the 0% um, four months installment, pwedeng pwede. And we also have a lot of student, student bonuses. Like meron tayong mga discounts from Nuxis and other brands, marami tayong mga bonuses na pwede nyo enjoy if you enroll this December. Okay, so that's all for my presentation today. Let me just stop sharing my screen. And yeah, maybe you can turn on your video para makita ko kayo and maybe shoot your questions. Dahil ang daming Chris knew. <laughs> maybe you would have to introduce yourselves. Ayan. So titignan ko lang yung mga questions. Hello, everyone. And Chris, maybe you can turn on your audio na. Yes, Sherby. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the very informative session. So we're, I think we're now opening the floor for Q&A na, no? Mm -hmm, yes. Um, and also, we have games pala. So, yes. Yes. So, ikaw na ba ang roll ng games, Chris? Yeah, you can ask a question and then Sige. You know, I'll take note of the of their Sige. names para later on, dun sa mga winners, you have to stay dito muna sa Zoom para oh. we'll give you uh, the we'll give you the mechanics on how to claim your prize. Correct. At saka yung maraming naka Chris New. So medyo may hihirapan tayo. Correct. Chris New sila Ayan. lahat. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So how do we do this? I have three questions. Sasagutin niyo lang sila kasi as mentioned in our invite, Chris or Nuxis is actually giving away exciting prizes to some of you. And nakinig naman kayo sa presentation natin. So meron lang tayong very, very easy question. Okay? Are you ready? Wala pa nag-on. Parang si Lu lang ang nakikita ko naka-on. Hello, Lou. <laughs> Wala pang ibang nag-on ng audio nila. Paano yan? Audio or video nila. Ayan, ready na ba kayo? Paano ba natin, how do we go through about this, Chris? Una mag-comment sa chat or una sumagot sa audio? Paano ba to? Can they raise their hand na lang? The first Ay, one okay. who raised their hand. Sige, yeah. okay. So marunong naman kayo mag-raise ng hand mo sa Zoom, ha? Sa Zoom. Okay, raise your hand sa Zoom kung sasagot kayo. First question, okay? Give an example of a hot oil. Mag-raise ng hands sa Zoom. Kasi yung icon. Click your app. Sin mo. Oo, oh, nakita ko sila. Para <laughs> hindi sinabi kung saan yung raise hand. Sige, give a chance to. Game, Ray. Wala pa naman. Game, mag-raise hand kayo. Nakikita ko naman lahat. Oh, meron. Dapat yung parang icon. Alam mo yes. parang... Yes, yung sa reaction. Click okay. reactions and then re click raise hand. Oh, yan na. So we have... Christina. Oregano. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So, tama. Oregano. Other examples are winter green. Nung ano pag-usapan natin kanya. Cinnamon leaves. Cinnamon bark. Um, ano pa ba ang pinag-usapan natin kanya? Basta Blue, those diba? are... Hmm? Clove, tama. Clove, yes, tama. Yan. Thank you so <laughs> So, yan. Congratulations, Christina. Next question. For our second question, please use yung baba mo na yung hand mo, Christina, sa reaction. Yan. Okay, so for our second question, true or false, easy lang to, true or false, okay, you cannot diffuse essential oils when you have cats in your room. True or false? You cannot diffuse essential oils when you have cats in your room. Sino gusto mo sumagot? Ayan, Alma? And Alma? Uh, and you can diffuse essential oils, but there are just some that you should avoid. Okay, so ano, can you please expound what are the oils that you, you avoid or ano pa yung ibang qualifications? Nahirapan daw siya. <laughs> Pero tawa naman yung sagot niya. You can, um, false kasi you can. You can diffuse essential oils around your cats given that aside from being mindful yung list na bawal, you have to make sure 
na kahit na pwede yung oil mo, like lavender, you can totally diffuse it around your cats. But always remember to make sure that your room is well ventilated. You have to keep at least one window open. But better if you keep your door and window open kasi para they have um, the option to step out of the room when it feels overwhelming for your pet. And you have to make sure to keep it very, very short lang. 20 minutes max when you're diffusing around your pets, especially small pets, including dogs, okay? Yung small dogs like Chihuahua or Maltese or Shih Tzu, yung mga maliliit, make sure na short lang yung time. Maximum is 30 minutes. Maximum na yun. Um, kasi it can get overwhelming to them. If you don't want to think about all of those things, then you can diffuse hydrosols. Yeah. Okay. question ako dun related to Jerby. Kasi I don't, yeah. have, I don't have cats. But, talimbawa, meron kang mother cat, tapos feeling mo na stress yung mother cat sa, you know, breastfeeding or I don't know. Like, nag, nag, uh, um, nag-apply din ba yung rule na, I mean, parang, kasi may kittens, can you also and not or not? Kasi meron may mother cat, kasi yung mother cat makakalit sa kittens can't move. So, should okay. you? Correct. That's that's a good question. Thank you so much for that. So, as long as meron kang other pets, like especially kittens, treat it as infants, na parang pag ganun, sobrang nikis ka ng balat nila. Therefore, please do not, do not diffuse at all. Kasi masyadong overwhelming yun for them. Pwede silang mamatay. Um, just like, may nakita nga akong comment kanina na yan, may nag-diffuse sa lovebirds dahil tapos namatay agad. That's very, very expected kasi ang liit lang ng lovebird, ang liit ng body mass niya. So, yung amount of oil na di-diffuse mo na maybe konti lang for you hindi mo detect or enough lang for a dog is super overwhelming for a lovebird and especially overwhelming for a kitten. So, pag meron kayong very, very small pets, always be very mindful na wag na lang kayong mag-diffuse. Or like what I do, I make sure to step out and go to a separate room. If I need to diffuse for my own health and body, ako na lang ilalabas para hindi ma-expose yung pets sa essential oils. Kasi masyado siyang concentrated, masyado silang ma-overwhelm. And again, um, toxicity always relies on how much dose you expose yourself to it. Right? Okay, thank you so much for that, Lou. And congratulations, Alma. For our third question, please use your reaction and raise your hand when you know the answer. Okay? Give an oil that is safe for children zero to two years old. Yeah. Hey, give chance to others. <laughs> give chance to others. Sino pang mag- Yan, Lu. Yan, si Luna. Manghuhula lang ako kasi <laughs> para feeling ko. Feeling ko lavender, pwede ba yun? Kasi para feeling ko lavender is pwede for, for anything. Pero that's... Tawa. Congratulations, Tama. So, lavender is pretty safe for everyone and everything. Even cats and dogs, pwede siya. But again, always remember, the dosage is very, very important. So, for kids, zero to two, pag gagawa kayo, for example, ng massage blend for them, um, pwede nyo naman siyang gamitin, but at a low dilution, na-share natin kanina, for infant, point, point two lang maximum, right? So, very, very little. But if you don't want to think about that, kasi ang hirap din gumawa ng point two na dilution. I would rather you use um, lavender hydrosol instead para hindi nyo naisipin yun. Same with pets. Pwede ko mag-diffuse sa lavender oil, pero why pa? Meron namang lavender hydrosol. So ako, yeah. as an animal aromatherapist, I actually use a lot of hydrosols for my pets. Very, very seldom that I use essential oils with them. Okay? Yes. Yeah, so, Kirby, ano to, kasi since we're talking about lavender, kasi since, um, ano to, then maraming kinds ng lavender ngayon, di ba? So, mm-hmm. there are specific lavender na pwede or hindi pwede or Tabo, like spike lavender is, you know, just the same as, you know, um, lavandula angustofolia or yung lavender na, does it matter kung, kasi yeah. may, may, like may nagbebenta, like I know, for example, like, uh, so you have the different um, um, species, hmm. and then may nagbebenta rin ang combination of lavenders, kasi like BC fragrance, doesn't have um, a pure lavender or they have this combination of lavender that's so naturally. So does it matter or doesn't it matter in this case? Thank you so much for that. Yes, for me, it matters. Ako, I'm very, very uh, privy about that. Gusto ko talaga titignan. And that is why I like working with single oils 
I rarely buy blends, honestly. As an aromatherapist, gusto ko ako yung nagbe-blend so that I know what's exactly in it and how much of it is in it. Kasi pag bumili ka ng blend, like sabihin natin mix of lavenders, you don't even know how much of lavandula ang gospifolia and how much of spike lavender is in it, di ba? Um, for me, mas simple lang na gagamit na lang ako ng basic lavandula ang gospifolia or basic lavender to, to use it. If I'm feeling more OC, sometimes I even check the GCMS. So what I like about Nuxis is that all their GCMS ma-access this website. And that's really helpful, whether as a beginner oiler or as an aromatherapist. I know for beginners, hindi nyo maintindihan yung GCMS. It's so overwhelming. And some beginner aromatherapists, parang hindi naman nila binabasa yan. And that is also one of the things that we teach in our school. Na parang, What's this for? How do you interpret this? So, ano ba yung dapat yung tingnan? Like, when I was deciding or when I was um, trying to find out if calamansi and dalandan are phototoxic, ano ba yung mga hinanap ko sa GCMS para to drive into the conclusion na hindi siya phototoxic? And to add to that, kasi I, I just don't, that's what I, that's my methodology, but I wanted to be sure, I even submitted it to Tisaran and had them check, and to Jane Jules, to have them check it, para I have that confirmation. So, going back to your question, yes, it's very important to work with Single oils lang, para mas simple. Sure, you can use a blend of lavenders, yan, pero for me, it increases the risk of you exposing whether your pet, your infant, or whoever close to you, or you yourself, to, to risk. Na, kasi baka hindi mo rin alam kung gano'ng karami, or which of which yung nilagay siya. So for me, mas simple lang if we work with single oils. But you have that option too. Like for example, like you shared before, na parang, oh, meron kasing seller na they don't, na diba? sell single oils, yung blend na lang kasi mas cost-effective, meron ganun option. You can choose that, but for me lang, as an expert advice, I would rather go with singles, just so I'm sure I have full control of how much of this component I want to include in my plantation or exposure. Yeah. Hi, may nagtatanong. Somebody's raising his or her hand. Please um turn on your audio. Yeah, that's me, Jeremy. <laughs> uh, I just want to add, speaking of interpreting the GCMS, um, okay. that's also one of the good things here in Nuxis. Kasi nga, since I'm taking up the certification program for aromatherapy, they can always send us a message sa social media accounts, sa Lazada, sa Shopee, and we'll try to answer all of the questions in terms of... Um, yung sa mga pag-interpret ng GCMS. And if not, syempre, I have here my friend, Jerby, then, you know, <laughs> I can reach out to you anytime, right? Diba? Alright. Add so, yeah. ko lang na na-full na meron si Tinuxis ng GCMS na accessible. Kasi, um, if 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 they go to component na nandiyan, halimbawa, love na love nyo yung mga conifers, ganyan, and if you want a specific ingredient na mag-shine dun sa inyong formulation, super helpful na makikita nyo talaga yung specific percentage um, nung component na mahalaga sa inyo for your purpose in blending. So, napaka-helpful na Nuxus offers this. Thank you so much. I have another question from Ems. So, from Ems, wala kasi akong bergamot SCF. May difference bang aroma ng bergamot at bergamot SCF? Um, in my personal opinion, very, very little difference Almost to none. Ang may bergamot pa rin siya. Um, I have uh, a bottle of bergamot FCF. Pero wag na natin i-mention kasi hindi siya Nuxis. <laughs> so, ibang brand siya. Meron talaga mga brands, they, they do that. Hopefully, maybe, Chris, you should check into that. No? Kung kaya niyo mag-offer ng FCF-free um, bergamot in the future or bergamot in the future. Pero wala naman siyang difference sa scent. So, if you really like that smell of bergamot and you intend to use it as part of your like, yun nga, solid perfume. Normally, kasi maganda yung bergamot talaga from perfume or, I don't know, anti-anxiety blend na nakikita mo, i-apply mo siya sa skin and you might need to go out under the sun. Um, yes, you can always opt for bergamot, bergamot, and free. Ang bango ni bergamot, yes. Bergamot is normally used as um, para sa mga pang-stress, pang-anti-anxiety, yan. Pwede rin siyang pang to calm you down. So, yeah. Or even to Freshen up the air, you can use for one. Any other questions? So, actually, yeah, one hour pa lang. Oh, here, we have 
question uh, regarding the essential oils. Na ginamit po yung oils for skin. Ginamit po yung oils for skin care. Pwede rin po ba siyang i-apply blended with makeup? For example, a face or primer. Um, if you can turn on your audio and maybe you can expand on this piece. Pwede ba? Kasi Chris knew din yung name niya kaya nahihirapan ako kung hindi nagtanong. <laughs> Shy siya. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so yung nagtanong kung pwede siya. Go Mike. Turn okay. on your audio na Turn para ano, audio explain audio. mo. <laughs> I think na nag-chat kasi siya sa akin earlier. Parang tinatanong niya, um, kung pwede daw ba i-blend yung essential oils sa makeup? As primer. Like, kunwari, kunwari um, primer. Primer yung gagamitin niya. Pwede ba niyang lagyan ng essential oils yung primer niya? Like what oil? I wanted to be very specific about this sun. Anong oil daw, Mike? Uh, Salita ka. Huwag ka mahiya. <laughs> Like what oil and then paano? Kasi para we get the full picture of it. Kasi right now you're giving me a question na para okay, paano ba yun? Kasi I haven't done this. I haven't heard this from other people. So I just want to know how planning to do it. There's no right or wrong question naman. So please be comfortable in asking whatever question that you have. I think siguro na parang titri kasi is known to ano eh, di ba? Parang support yung skin natin. So okay. maybe siguro Mike is referring to tea tree. Let's say, pwede ko bang i-mix yung tea tree sa primer ko okay. para i-apply ko sa face ko. Parang ganon. Okay. So, ano ba itong primer niya? Ano bang brand? Or ano ba yung gamit yung primer? <laughs> Sorry. What, what kind? Is it Max Fix Plus or what? Anong primer ba ito? Eh, hindi ko alam. Ko anong... Mike, salita ka na. Oh, Huwag ka na mahiya, girl. <laughs> so, may mga primer na ano, di ba? Na parang oh, yung liquid. Correct. Uh, that is why I'm asking. Kasi I can't add. So important. Yeah, I so can't provide info kasi I don't know anything about oh, makeup. Ma. So. <laughs> Share mo naman. Expand mo naman. Pero habang nag-iisip ka kung gusto mo expand, <laughs> sasagutin ko na lang in, in, my, in my most, uh, in my utmost capacity. The reason why I'm probing and asking, and this is like a common, um, I guess, methodology for aromatherapists. No? We like to probe. Kasi how can we provide a good um, answer or recommendation if we have no idea how it's done, di ba? So, kaya ako nagpo-probe is, tama yung sinabi ni Lou, meron kasi iba-ibang klase yung primer. And we mentioned earlier, essential oils are hydrophobic. And by nature, your essential oils would repel water, water-soluble um, mixtures. So, kung ang primer mo, for example, Max Fix Plus, this is highly water-soluble. In short, pag nilagay mo si Max, well, Max Fix, let's just spray it, right? So pag nilagay mo sa mga, so nilagay ka ng titi, hindi siya naghalo. Hindi rin siya nadayute. So you're just exposing your skin to pure TT, And that cannot be safe. So kaya ako tinatanong, ano ba yung primer na gamit mo? Meron din primer na silicone base, dimethicone base. Okay, so beyond, um, I'm not sure if it's soluble. Okay ba yung solubility ng silicone soils? Would you know? I would assume hindi. Pero if you... But, but, but kasi parang, I, mean, I would imagine na kasi yung, yung final product na yung ginagamit mo eh, na ano to, na cosmetic. And then, okay. you're going to introduce uh, a new ingredient that um, na pwede kang may mga allergens doon or something. And it you are not sure about the solubility of this, okay. either liquid or solid, or pwede ba siya. I mean, it can be siguro oil-based or something, but you don't know for sure. Okay. Baka sa research pa lang. So, it might be a little bit risky to do this kasi mas maganda na nakumbine na si essential oil, if possible, dung formulation rather than do sa dulo, parang afterthought na lang siya. Medyo risk for the face, lalo na. Ang example niya na specific is aloe vera. Oh! Still, it's a water-soluble mixture. Yeah, so, so we can we do imagine not that the oil will still flow. Yun nga. So, feeling ko naman kasi, like, there are primers na dimethicone based, yung it's silicone based. Um, feeling ko hindi rin siya ganun ka maging efficient mag-mix. So, baka hindi rin okay. So, I would suggest if you like to use tea tree, 
for your skin, why don't you explore tea tree hydrosol? Diba? Mas okay yun. You can spray your face with tea tree hydrosol, go on with your favorite primer, whatever formulation that is. That would work so much better versus you try to put your primer here and put some oils and mix it tapal-tapal. Kasi in-imagine ko rin, I don't think there is like an oil-based primer. Kasi if oil-based siya, dudulas yung makeup mo for sure. Di ba? Tsaka, <laughs> for safety reasons din kasi, para sa face, kasi maraming mga mucus, di ba? Bawa, nag inaayos ayos mo dito. Correct. Sa mata. Sa, sa <laughs> kita ng nose, di ba? Parang, and it, it will make you cry siguro or kumbaga in pain pag nagkawa ng konting, kahit konting exposure lang. Oh, so you reduce the risk because the makeup is supposed to be, you know, enjoyable. But tea tree hydrosol, I think it really works. Yeah, tea tree hydrosol would be your best bet, even if you mix it with your aloe vera gel or aloe vera, no, pwedeng pwede. You spray it on first. Ako, I like spraying my face with rosemary hydrosol. When I feel that it's too, sometimes when I wake up, parang feeling mo na parang, Medyo itchy siya, I spray rosemary. If I feel my skin is a little bit tight, I like spraying ilang-ilang hydrosol. That's what I do. So, you know, some people, they like using chamomile hydrosol. That's also good. Um, frankincense, if you have acne-prone skin at time of the month, at galit na galit siya, yan, you can use chamomile and frankincense. So, those are the aromatic plant products that you can explore. Hindi natin kailangan maging sarado sa essential oils kasi most often than not, there are better options versus using long plain essential oils. I have a follow-up question on that, Shirley. Yes. Um, how about using jojoba oil as a primer? Pepedi ba? Tapos imi mix din yung tea tree. Hindi ba like di ba you mentioned earlier na baka hindi ko mapit yung makeup? Pero di ba ang jojoba kasi nagpepenetrate kasi siya agad sa skin eh. So pepedi ba ang gamitin yon as a primer? For me, wala ako nakita ng pas parang commercially produced primer na oil-based talaga. Foundation meron. Alam ko, foundation has oils in it. That's why when it's long enough, makikita mo sa separate yung oil eh. Um, kasi meron siyang oil component. Pero for primer, when we're talking about primer, kaya mo siya nilalagay kasi para mas may longevity yung makeup, right? Usually, ang primer mo, it's more as an anchor and wala pa akong nakita ng oil-based primer. Now, if you want to use jojoba oil, Kasi parang, what if dry yung skin ko and I want, just want to put some oil in it, right? Maybe you can, pero I don't know if it's smart to use that as a primer. What if you can do that as your facial serum sa gabi? Yung hindi mo na kalalas yan ng makeup exactly. over it. I think mas okay yun, mas sensible yun. Kasi kaysa sa iyo sasabihin mo, gusto ko ng jojoba oil tas may tapis, magmalalagay ako ng makeup. What if hold on to that idea na maglagay ka ng, ng goodness during the day? kagabi mo na lang ilagay. Ganun din yun. Hindi mo pa iisipin kung magsaslip around yung makeup mo or magre-react siya with your makeup. Right? Skin so, yeah. regimen na lang at night, no? Oo. Yeah. Um, to your question, you can use tea tree and jojoba, pero instead of using it in the morning, please use it na lang at night and treat it as your facial serum. That would be more sensible for us, right? That's a good question, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tama. Chris, may nagtatanong, meron ba kayong balak maglabas ng hydrosols? We're looking into it. So, super dami pa naming plans for Nuxis. Siyempre, baby company pa lang kami. We started 2020. And we're still looking into adding more uh, products sa ating ano. So, watch out for it na lang. Anything is possible. But what's good about this is that um, so far, no, I, I only work with brands that I really um, am confident in. So I, I that's why we have this today. Because when I saw the news, when they um, approached me and I checked their company out, I liked the information on their website. I like the fact that GCMS is available on their website. Um, and I'm very confident with the quality of their work. So, if hindi nyo pa natry, please do, please check them out. This 12-12, baka meron kang announcement for 12-12, Chris. Yes. Please super, <laughs> super big discounts this coming 12-12. So, last major sale na to ng Lazada for this year. So, make sure to check out our stores on Lazada. Um, Speaking of ano din, no, yung parang, yung products nga, yun nga tulad nung minention ni Jerby, 
it's so hard kasi to source and ayaw namin naman maglabas lang ng hindi magandang quality. So, yeah, we're looking into it na dun sa mga hydrosols na magiging available soon. Yes, Apo, naghahanap ano lang tayo ng magandang source. Correct. So, ito, plugging lang. So, actually, for those of you who are enrolling with our aromatherapy certification level 1, this kit, um, this is 24, tama na, 24 set of oils with carrier oil ang kasama. This is offered for our students at 20% off until this December. Yeah. So, ang daming bonus ni Nuxes for our students. For all of you who are Toying with the idea or on the fence about taking your certification, it's time to invest in yourselves this year. Kasi itong matututunan nyo, you're gonna be having this for the rest of your life. Um, the, Our course is has lifetime access, so it's with you forever. All the updated versions may access ka forever. You will be mentored by the best aromatherapist that's Jade Shoots with over 30 years or three decades of experience. Um. And I will be supplementing that. So, saling kit lang ako doon. Ang talagang main mentor niyo si Jade. But, you know, our course here in the Philippines is one of the most robust kasi we take after the U.S. Um, aromatherapy certification course. Pero it's supplemented by modules that's targeted towards the Philippine plant medicine um, history and culture. And meron din tayong mga farm visit. It's, it's very, very... Naiingit na si Chris. Bakit hindi siya nag-enroll sa atin? <laughs> Oo oh, oh, nga. just ko. Pero kasi, ano, nag-enroll siya sa school niya. Before Even, pa. Yeah, the school happened. The Philippine school happened. So, it's the best deal, honestly, um, that you can ever find, whether here or abroad. So, I encourage you, if you have, if you know someone or anyone, if you have friends who are interested in becoming an aromatherapist, or at least, para bang, if you have, a lot of our students are essential oil business owners. Yung mga nagbabenta ng mga roller blends, and they just want that certification para maging credible, they're really having fun kasi it's the most robust program we have here in the country. And it's very, very affordable. Super affordable. Yeah. Compared kapag ka nag-enroll ka sa ibang school. Oh, nagbenta ng like atay yung... ay nang ano, kidney. <laughs> <laughs> Pandemic pa noon na nag-enroll ako. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> So, yun. Ayan. Wala, wala nang nagtatanong. Maybe we can end this? Yeah. Can we end sure this we can. So, if you don't have any more questions, guys, thank you so much for attending and thank you also, Jerby, for hosting this session. 